welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, and today we'll talk about Arianism. Generally, if you know anything about the heresies, the one you're most likely to have heard of is Arianism. Bishop Arius was born in Cyrenaica in the year 256 AD. We don't know a great deal about his opinions on church teaching for certain, though we do know that he was a bishop during the same time as St. Athanasius of Alexandria and St. Nicholas. Actually, yes, although the real St. Nicholas obviously didn't live at the North Pole. He was known to have given people presents and was a bishop at the time. According to the historian Socrates of Constantinople, Arius was upset when he heard a sermon stating that the Son of God was similar to the Father. Afraid that this might signify a return to Sabellianism, Arius condemned the sermon and argued that since the Father begat the Son, the Begotten One had a beginning in existence. In essence, Arius denied that Jesus was also eternal and therefore God. The implications of this claim are huge. This means that according to Arius, Jesus was literally not God. A great being, sure, super advanced, extra awesome, but still a created being, still not God himself. Now, as big a heresy as this was, the truth is that up to that point, most heresies didn't really need to be dealt with directly by church authority, because they never really went very far. It was really very uncommon for a heresy to travel very far beyond the borders of a particular bishop's sphere of influence. That was not the case with Arianism. It spread far and wide, and literally thousands upon thousands of people were Arian, practically in the blink of an eye. How did this happen? Well, according to St. Athanasius, the answer was, through songs. In his Discourses Against the Arians, he wrote that Arius wrote a type of song written to be sung at banquets and containing his faulty understanding of the nature of Jesus. These songs would be spread among the citizens, then sung by sailors from one port to the next, which is probably how Athanasius first heard about it. Alexandria, where he lived, was a major port town. Well... As with every other heresy, Arius' views didn't go unchallenged. His strongest opposition would come from the aforementioned Athanasius. Athanasius' struggle against Arianism was unceasing and painful. He was frequently in conflict with major Arians, to say nothing of at least four Roman emperors. He was sent into exile five times, but he never gave up. In the end, the church determined at the First Council of Nicaea that Arius' views were incorrect and heretical, but not before a debate so heated that St. Nicholas, yes, that one, actually punched Arius in the face. Arius and some of his men were deposed and exiled, and you'd think that would have been that. Eventually, however, the emperor started to lighten up on Arius, trying to use his authority to get him back into the church, but just as Arius was about to be admitted to communion against the objections of the bishop, he suddenly died. Well, even with Arius dead, the heresy of Arianism wouldn't be cleared up for decades. Still, after a while, it was eventually cleared up. Or so we all thought. It had been firmly established that Jesus was, in fact, divine and was God, and that was all there was to say about it. However, I think Arianism proves just how easily error can creep into common belief systems, and just how little good reason has to do with it. Arianism spread quickly and subtly with all the justification, or lack thereof, of a catchy internet meme, and caused tremendous suffering for many good and holy people. This is why the use of good and sound reason is so important, and faithfulness to Jesus and his church even more so. Next, we have another hundred years forward to travel for our next stop, a visit with a theologian named Pelagius. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.